Okay, so the good news about dividing fractions is the fact that it's very similar to multiplying fractions. We just use a little trick to turn a division problem into a multiplication problem. Now that trick involves us understanding what the word reciprocal means. The reciprocal of a number basically means that we turn the fraction upside down. So for example, if I had 3 over 7, the reciprocal of 3 over 7 is 7 over 3. Okay, so you just flip the two around. Or in part B, the reciprocal of 1 over 8. Can anyone guess what that would be? Will? 8 over 1, which is the same as? 1 over 8. Nope. The reciprocal of 1 over 8 is 8 over 1, but what's 8 over 1 the same as 8? Yeah, just 8. Then 5. Would anyone be able to tell me what the reciprocal of 5 would be? 1 over 5. All right, now, you might be thinking, Mr. Albert, why do I need to know what a reciprocal is? Well, the reason why we need to know what a reciprocal is is because when we want to do a division, pro division problem like this, we can turn this division problem into a multiplication problem by using the reciprocal of this value here. So, I'll just get my ladybug up. So this is chapter 2e, I believe. Dividing fractions. And our first problem is example 2e2. And please label your work example 2 E2. Calculate we'll do a few of these. So one over seven divided by three over five. All right. So like I said, we just want to turn this division problem into a multiplication problem. The first number does not change. The first number stays, or the first fraction stays as 1 over 7. Now we know how to do a multiplication, so I'm going to write times. Now clearly I can't just write times 3 over 5. I can't just go from divided 3 over 5 to times 3 over 5. So this is where the reciprocal becomes handy. I change this by, into a multiplication problem by writing the reciprocal of 3 over 5. So I write 5 over 3. Now, this is a problem that we're all able to do from multiplication. So I want you guys just to have a quick go at it, and then I'll finish it off. So to do it, we have to, as always, find a com. Sorry, we don't need to find a common denominator. That's in addition and subtraction. In multiplication, it's as simple as multiplying our top values and multiplying our bottom values. If there's some value that we could cancel, we could do so, but there isn't. So 1 times 5 on the top, or the numerator just gives me 5, over 7 times 3 gives me 21. So... 1 seventh divided by 3 fifths is 5 over 21. All right, what if I had, uh, let's say, three holes, and I want to know how many times 2 over 5 fits into three holes. So what would be the first first thing you might want to write to change this? 
Is one of the three times by foot a final resistance? No. The three stays as is. Yep, so I'm going to write three over one. All right, because three over one is no different than three. Remember, the first number always stays the same. See how one seventh stayed the same? All right, so the three will stay the same, but I've just written it as three over one because three divided by one is the same as just three. Now, a division problem isn't that useful for us, so let's change this to a multiplication problem. And in doing so, we have to use the reciprocal of 2 over 5. So the reciprocal of 2 over 5 is, everyone? Okay, so then it's a matter of just multiplying our top numbers, or our numerators, 15 over 2. Now, I'm going to change this to a mixed number for a specific reason. So 2 goes into 15 how many times? With how many left over? Over 2. So what this is saying is 2 fifths fits into 3 seven and a half times. All right, just like any division problem that we normally do, if we want to know how many times a number fits into another. So with these questions up here, they say rewrite each division problem in the form how many lots of something are in something. So how could we, with this first one, 2 divided by 1 8, could anyone, does anyone feel confident to use that sentence to fill in the gaps? How many lots of something are in something? Lincoln. How many lots of? Yeah, good. So how many lots of these are in two holes? All right, or if we're doing this one, how many lots of one thirds are in four? So if you're given an example that gives you numbers in mixed numbers, I would suggest you change them to improper fractions and do the same process. I'm not going to go through that example because I'm confident that you can all do it. And that's about all the explicit teaching that I need to do.